<laughs> After the media tried to push the bloodbath hoax, President Biden is launching a new baseless smear against Donald Trump. Joe's campaign is getting mighty desperate to win back Hispanic voters who are flocking toward the former president. So Biden is going on Spanish radio and accusing Trump of hating Latinos. This guy despises Latinos. I understand Latino values. You know, they're like, they're kind of, we just celebrated St. Patrick's Day. I hope you're not offended by my saying this, but, you know, the thing about the Irish who came here, they're about family, about faith, about decency. Yes. And that's exactly what the Latino community is all about. And Biden's fear-mongering to Hispanics didn't end there. The president stopping by a Mexican restaurant in Arizona where he twisted Trump's words about illegal border crossers. This election is, uh, is not a referendum on me. It's, a, it's an election between me and a guy named Trump. And, uh, and uh, this is a guy who, uh, who's, the way he talks about the Latino community is, uh, well, in 2016, he called Latinos criminal drug dealers and rapists when he came down that escalator. Now he says immigrants are poisoning the blood of our country. You're the reason why, in large part, I beat Donald Trump. I need you. I need you badly. Jesse, is Biden so incapable of articulating a reason why people need to vote for him that he resorts to a five-year-old, Trump hates you, you can't vote for him? That that was pretty pathetic, watching him in that dark, small Spanish restaurant. That's all the people he could muster up. He flew all the way across the country. And he spoke at a taqueria to two people off of notes his staff wrote for him. The meds look like they were off from the State of the Union pills. The man is basically running on fumes. One word, actually two, Judge, Mm. taco bowls. Mm. Donald Trump sells taco bowls. They're the greatest taco bowls you've ever eaten. I've tried them. They're delicious. Does Joe Biden sell taco bowls? No. (laughs) His family thinks Mexican-Americans are tacos, but... If you read between the lines about what that statement said, he said, Trump hates you and you like me because I'm Irish. I mean, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. If you look at the polling, it's dead even with Hispanics and Donald Trump and Biden. And the Hispanics, 29% hate Joe Biden's border policies. Yep. 28% support 28% support him on inflation. This guy is getting the worst ratings of Hispanics I've ever seen. And and now he's just, all he has is slander. Well, and you know, it's kind of interesting, Jessica. In fact, it's rich coming from a guy who gave a eulogy for a Klan leader and opposed integration of schools with black and white children, basically saying it would turn schools into jungles to then turn around and say, you know, Donald Trump really hates you. Well... We're not going to litigate the We're not. change it's that true. Robert Byrd went through over the course of his life. But mm. I, you mean he I, wasn't a Klansman? He, he was, but he didn't die a Klansman, uh. right? Oh, I, all right, whatever. Well, what about what, the integration of the schools? Joe Biden was against it. Okay. Yeah, I, I too remember when Kamala Harris said I was that little girl on the bus. I, I, I got all of it. So. Do Democrats wish that this is how the campaign could be run, where you could just play it on loop. He said this, like vermin poisoning the blood of America. Absolutely. Is that going to work? Absolutely not. So Donald Trump got 8% more of the Latino vote between 2016 and 2020, and he's on track to continue to build on that. I don't think it'll end up being even. That would be a total kind of upending of recent electoral history, but he's definitely gaining. And there are a lot of very smart Democratic analysts that are yelling from the rooftops that the number one issue that Latinos want to talk about is inflation and jobs and the economy, and they don't want to talk about voting rights, and they don't want to hear about how Donald Trump just hates them. That's not enough of a reason for them to go to the polls and support the Democrats. So that needs to be a change um, from the Biden camp, and I hope that the ads will continue to emphasize jobs programs, tackling inflation, and those kinds of issues. And, you know, Dana, if Biden says the election is not really a referendum on him, why is Trump doing so well on the economy, inflation and immigration? I think it's because people are obviously making a comparison and it is a referendum on the uh, incumbent. Nate Silver, who founded uh, 538 
pollster, he said that Biden is now winning Hispanics by seven percentage points. Before, in 2020, he had 24, he was winning by 24 percent. So that is a precipitous drop. How does it get there? I don't necessarily think it's because Trump has been doing a great job of community, communicating directly to Hispanics. I think Biden has just lost the Hispanic vote because he's focused on all sorts of things like electric vehicles, climate change, all of these regulations and rules that have nothing to do with them while they watch their schools fall, fall apart, crime go up, the immigration, the fact that the, the immigration, of course, that is an issue that they think that Democrats just think all Latinos thought the same on immigration. They clearly don't. But the gas prices and the grocery store every single day. And I'm going to add another one. And that is the Biden administration has completely screwed up this year, this update to the college financial aid system. And you, oh, yeah. you cannot apply. And so it's been pushed back so long that these people are like, no wonder they feel like the American dream is out of reach. It's just like every time they go, it's, it's like Lucy with the football. It, it, she takes it away every time they think that they get a foothold on getting ahead. You want to wrap that one up, Greg? Sure. Uh, so we're back to Latinos. Remember when it was Latinx? Oh, Latinx. And Latinx. I think that was... I, I, one person. I, no, but that, I, I, there's a point there. It was about how... What this was always about was pre was playing off identity. And I think if you look at this battle, you know, who, who are the good guys here? What side has the higher ground? The side that focuses on variables like the economy and crime, immigration, education, or the side that focuses, again, on race or gender or sexuality? You know, which one is the least racist, the least divisive, the most colorblind? It's pretty obvious. Which side also offers the most constructive debate in the public square where you can talk about things like economy, crime, immigration, education? But the Dems realize that when you when you invoke race, then any resistance in the form of a debate will be construed as racist. So basically, it's an emergency break to halt any debate, but they're now using that emergency break at every turn. So once again, and this is a bigger moment than, than that, that thing, it's a state of this melting pot. Once again, the great uniter is using identity to divide and conquer. And it's not just about a candidate, Trump. It's about all of us. In order to maintain power, uh, and maintain a grip on the reins of power, they foment conflict among citizens, especially when the citizens are starting to know better. So this racial animus is their tool to turn us on each other so we don't turn against them. Okay. All right. Up next, a homeowner tries to kick out a squatter, and she's the one who gets arrested. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.